Hey guys, Mike here. So today, I'm here to talk to you about The Invisible Man. In this review, I'll be going over a brief summary of the plot, my quick thoughts about the film, and whether or not you guys should go and see it. So I'm going to try and keep this review spoiler free. However, if you don't know anything about the film and you want to go in completely blind, then it's just come back to this video once you've seen the film. So with that, let's get started, shall we? There you are. So The Invisible Man stars Elizabeth Moss as Cecilia Cass, you may remember her best from The Handmaid's Tale. In The Invisible Man, Cecilia has just managed to get away from her abusive boyfriend. However, weeks later she finds out that he's taken his own life and that he's left her a small fortune. However, she suspects that his death is a hoax as a bunch of coincidences turn lethal. So she's trying to prove that she's being haunted by a man that no one can see. And so we have The Invisible Man. So guys, I gotta be honest with you, I'd pretty much written The Invisible Man off even before I'd watched it. The main reason I went to go see this one was because I was seeing multiple different movies on the same day. So I wasn't really expecting much from this one. The most I figured I'd get was a good performance off of Elizabeth Moss. Because even when she's in bad movies, like say The Kitchen, she's still really good and stands out from the rest of them. But my god, I could not have been more wrong about The Invisible Man. Right from the get-go, The Invisible Man is tense, suspenseful, and it really feels like anything could happen. And right from the get-go, Elizabeth Moss's character establishes herself as a survivor who's very creative and very likeable as well, and just someone who you really want to see succeed. And honestly, I'd really say that Elizabeth Moss's performance was the make or break for The Invisible Man, and she absolutely killed it in this role. Honestly, I think this is my favourite Elizabeth Moss role now, though realistically I haven't really seen her all that much, but still, this is my new favourite. One of the things I really loved about The Invisible Man is that it quickly establishes itself as more sci-fi than supernatural. Because right from the very first 10 minutes, The Invisible Man quickly establishes itself as something that's going to be a bit more scientific and based in the realms of reality, as opposed to something that just happens and requires a little explanation. Because I do like supernatural stories, but more often than not, they don't really explain how this happens or how it led up to this moment. They just kind of go, here it is, accept it. Whereas in The Invisible Man, though it's not the most detailed of explanations, they still explain how and why this is happening. And honestly, having said that, I think they use the right amount of detail and you can kind of use your imagination to explain the rest away. But as for this story of Invisible Man, Every time I tried to predict something that was going to happen, something else completely different happened. Sometimes it's a slight shift in tone, sometimes it's a character being where they're not supposed to be, or it's just a completely different direction from which I thought it was going to go. The Invisible Man always kept me guessing, that's something I really loved about it. And obviously, this being a horror movie, there's going to be a lot of jump scares. But actually, to be fair, I quite like the jump scares in The Invisible Man, because they're very far in between, and they always feel purposeful. Because more often than not in horror movies, they just put in a jump scare for the sake of having a jump scare. Whereas in The Invisible Man, because the story's so interesting and you're so invested in the characters, all of the jump scares feel earned. But having said that as well, The Invisible Man didn't really actually need any jump scares because there's always this airy tension surrounding the whole film that just never goes away. And though there's very little action in this film, all of the action that's in it is shot stupendously. You can see everything that was going on, and they employed quite a lot of interesting camera techniques. And after looking up details about this film, I found out something that really blew me away and made me love this film even more. Because the person who wrote and directed The Invisible Man is Lee Whannell, who wrote and directed one of my all-time favourite action movies, Upgrade. Honestly, if you haven't seen Upgrade, Go watch Upgrade right now, it'll blow you away. And you can definitely tell the person who made that also made this as well. So clearly he knows his action, but what about his horror? Well, he's also one of the people who created the Saw franchise. So pretty much from the get-go, you've got a writer who knows how to do sci-fi, horror, and action all in one film. Honestly, I'd say the only bit that kind of lost me in The Invisible Man is towards the end where there's a bit of a leap of logic. It's nothing so bad that it ruins the whole movie and makes the whole thing feel pointless or that it doesn't make sense. It's just something that I felt if they shut it a different way or established different time frames, it would have really worked. Or maybe if they went into a bit more detail about how something actually works. But still, overall, I really loved the ending and the movie as a whole. Overall, guys, I really loved The Invisible Man way more than I thought I would. Elizabeth Moss and the supporting cast are all really good in this. The horror is on point, the action's on point, and the story is really interesting. But now, as for or not, you guys should go and see it. Honestly, you need to go see The Invisible Man. This is one, honestly, where the trailers really make it look like just another run-of-the-mill horror movie. But honestly, The Invisible Man is so much more than that, and this is definitely one that you guys need to see. Okay guys, that's my review of The Invisible Man. If you've seen it, what did you think about it? And what's your favourite Elizabeth Moss performance? 
Whatever it is, drop it in the comments below. Until next time, I've been Michael. See ya.